your hunt on! On this hunt, the guys are in western Colorado at the Black Mesa Lodge on the Homestead Ranch. This is a one-of-a-kind 10,000 square foot lodge with full amenities and a great staff. From the time you walk in the door, you feel like part of the family. That's just a lodge. The country is breathtaking. At a little over 9,000 feet, there is a mix of aspen stands, big timber, and rolling meadows for elk to grow to be world-class trophies. This hunt starts on a cold, wet morning, but John didn't let it slow him down. Now let's hear how this hunt went from John himself. Well, we're here at the McLeod Ranch outside of Crawford, Colorado. We got here uh, three days ago. We got in real late at night, had a good night's sleep, woke up. Woke up to fog and rain and uh, it was, was tough conditions and pretty darn cold. Uh, went out on our hunt in the morning probably within an hour of hiking saw a couple cows and a small 5x5 five five bull that got us a little excited and within an hour we ran into this monster bull uh, when he turned his head it, it looked like it looked like he was a mountain looking at us yeah you know I'd spent two years hunting elk and hadn't even seen one in guided tours and uh, so I was a little bit apprehensive but uh, Tom McLeod had told me we were gonna see elk on this hunt but I'd also heard that two years in a row. So going three years and not seeing one, their anticipation was huge. Uh, when I did finally see one, the excitement was incredible. It was like nothing I'd ever seen in my life. And my heart was racing, uh, my hands were jittering, uh, steadying the gun against the tree was a challenge. I got so excited, I got into that scope so far that the scope gave me a little kiss. Um, it, this. The anticipation was crazy, but the results were even 10 times more. That elk was absolutely more than I would have ever dreamed of ever seeing, much less putting on the ground. Scoring 386, that's a tremendous elk, let alone it being his first elk. Phenomenal hunt, uh, my very first elk, and he was a monster, somewhere in the 380 range, and uh, just a beautiful, beautiful adventure. We had a great time, and uh, can't say anything more besides we just really, really enjoyed it. Later that day, the weather made a drastic change, now warm and sunny. The crew loads up and continues on. This time it was Curtis that got his opportunity. And we got up in the morning to a whole lot of rain. Lucky John got his bull and uh, we just got soaked. We saw a few bulls, came back to camp, had a little breakfast, regrouped, and uh, decided to go out in the afternoon. Afternoon hunt was perfect. We uh, did a lot of hiking up and down the hills, saw a lot of cows and calves that were running all over the place. Unfortunately, we were just unable to kind of strap down this, this big bull that we knew was out there. Well, boys. That's close. Whoops. Still chasing them. I know. We had, uh, we were close in those quick, thick quakies in there, but uh, they got to jump on us. Well, As you can see, got back down in the hole. So, uh, they're starting to 
talk a little bit right now, so we'll get down there and see if we can't get on one whistling at us. Yeah, we heard a little bugling. A couple sounds came out. And uh, sounds like we got one more. Maybe yeah, on the other side. Sounds to sound like there's right one here. screaming. Let's go take it's a time look. to get your hunt on. Let's do it. See? <laughs> I'm the pitch man. Top the hill, and these cows started busting out the bottom. And so we got set up in these trees, looking down into uh, this great big basin that came up the other side. And my guide, I really got to thank Custer so much. He looked at that bull and he said, "You know what? That's definitely a shooter." So I said, "That's all I need." <laughs> right there, I knew that was the bull I was going to take. Eventually he went and laid down and uh, we figured okay he's done. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> We're doing this thing as planned. We got our hunt down just, just like planned. 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 Exactly like planned, huh? He's down right. He's, he's right there at the end of the That was Aspen right enough. there. Yeah. Good job. Hello, magic man. Magic man. Uh, we walked down the this little road and got down to the bottom went up on this bull and let me tell you the bull I thought he was down there was no way I thought he was gonna get up and when I came up on him he all of a sudden just jumped up and I was wasn't expecting the bull to be running at full speed I looked at his ear and I thought you know what let me just put about two inches behind that ear boom and down he went crashed right through a tree it was like that was a way to, to drop a bull Beautiful shape. That's something to be proud of. Right there. On. Yep. Wow. That's an elk. Look at huh? this. Look at this third beam. How heavy that is. Spectacular. Yep. The third beam's like a whole planet on like its own. 28, 30 inches long there. Yeah. It's a super wide one. It's just beautiful. Beautiful. Fantastic. And like I say, just a beautiful bull. He's a. He's got you know a real long third tine, and he's got some extra stuff and. 
He's just a beautiful coat, beautiful animal, healthy, and I couldn't be happier. That was a fantastic, fantastic hunt. So I'm so happy here in Colorado in this beautiful blue skies, fresh air, and loving hunting. On the second morning of the trip, Scott was more than ready to get one of these trophies for himself. We're ready to head out for this uh, beautiful morning hunt here. Uh, the guy Larry is going to take us up here in this plateau. He says there's a couple big 6x6s six and a big 6x7 uh, six and maybe a uh, uh, atypical, but nice atypical ones to look at. So we're going to go up there and check that out. And we got the got the film crew, got the, 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 the good buddies here, and we're ready to, ready to get it done, huh, Curtis? Yep. Should do it. Yeah. First, First thing in the morning, just had a little recce. And uh, now that we're fueled up, let's go up the mountain and see if we can kill a few. And as you'll see, it didn't take him very long to do just that. It's a beautiful morning here, day two of our hunt. Um, I woke up this morning about 3.30, psyched and excited because I know I knew that this morning was my, 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 my opportunity because yesterday my hunting partners, uh, John and Curtis, uh, fulfilled their tags and got their elk. And so, and so this is my my morning, so I was, I was I was a little nervous and way excited. So, I woke up this morning and to a beautiful day. Sun was out, shining, a little crisp, but it was just fantastic. And so, we all piled in the in the rigs and, and uh, went out searching for the uh, the perfect bull. And uh, it's fantastic because we we got to our hunt spot this morning with our uh, our great guide Larry, and immediately we ran into some great animals. There's a bull in the middle of the between the two, yeah. right? Yeah. Look just to the left of it in the trees. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's pretty good. He's not. He's, he's not as him. big as this one. Mm. We've watch one. He's, he's a real tall narrow one. The one wallowing down there and the one right in the middle there. The one wallowing, I can't tell yet. Can you? I see rack. Ooh. Look at that. Now take a look because he just lifted his rack for you. Look at that, huh? Yeah, he's not that big. He's not. Sort of tall with him, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That one Short in the wall. Yeah. We're getting three, three bulls. Two are bedded down and feeding the aspens. There's a big bull. He'll, uh, side healing in the sunshine over here. Looks real good. Looks real good. Five to six bulls, huge bulls on here. On the right through them, there's a real nice one. Go take a look and see if we can get closer. All right, let's go. Uh, we all headed down uh, through through the aspens, and uh, um, after about 10, 15 minutes, we got set up, and um, it was really uh, nerve-wracking and exciting at the same time because we we actually couldn't see the the actual head of the bull with the body; we could see the horns.
Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Awesome. Super. Super. Yeah. Fuck yeah. okay, out, buddy. One shot. Well, no rack and waiting. Drop him, man. Yeah. Drop him. What were you waiting for? <laughs> we're all back here and waiting. I, cu I couldn't see the the. Uh, the brush was covering his yeah. kill zone, buddy. Thank you. The bolt turned broadside, and we just uh, made a perfect shot on him, and he, he, he fell right there. Uh, it was just fantastic. Super, super excited to do this. Um, uh, wow. Uh, the whole day's been great. Um, I think this is one of the, the nicest, best hunts I, I've been on. Well, we, uh, we came, we saw, we hunted, huh? We harvested. <laughs> fantastic bull here. We were looking at six or seven bulls in this canyon this morning. We saw this, another one come out uh, on this tree line down here and just sun themselves and just look beautiful. So we made a little little stalk under the fence line and just worked out perfectly. Wait a, wait a little while for him to uh, show himself behind the sagebrush, but it all worked out perfect. Yeah. And just before we shot, we heard and saw elk fighting in the background, bugling in the background, running in the background. Doesn't get any better <laughs> than this, does it? No, no, no. <laughs> High five. No. Right on. Another, yes. thanks, another thanks to Tom McLeod and his and his crew, his crew Screw. and his team. Fantastic yeah. operation. What a look beautiful look looking animal right here, huh? Look at that, huh? Right on. You're gonna make a beautiful yeah. mount. God, he's so symmetrical, huh? Yeah. Three monster elk in 36 hours. These guys sure don't mess around when it comes to getting the job done. Just another fantastic hunt for the storybooks. This hunt takes place near the town of White Sulphur Springs, Montana. John and Curtis have tags for just about everything that lurks in this area. So whitetail, mule deer, and elk are all fair game. When they arrive, they are greeted by their guide, Phil. After a few short introductions, John, Curtis, and cameraman Zach jump into trucks and head off to their new home away from home. The sleeping concoctions over here, Zach. I've got four pounds of chocolate, six <laughs> Red Bulls, telephone to call my sweetie, walkie-talkie to call, call in my kill, glasses so I can see, and these, of course, when Curtis is snoring. It's just so he doesn't wake himself up. <laughs> we are definitely ready for our first hunt in Montana, and I might have to have two Red Bulls to slow down. I'm so amped up at the moment. How about you? You got a new knife? Nope. Same standard... Uh... Elk can knife. I've been watching you carry a green one for a long time. Never seen that one. Oh, this is a fresh one. Nice. Fresh nice. one. Got to pull out of the woodwork. Okay, we got 600 rounds of ammo, so I think we're okay for the trip, huh? We've got blue tips. Got our firewood. <laughs> we got the firewood the dog. for the dog. We have uh, red tips. We got it all. We're ready to go. I'd say we are ready to go out and kill things. Be politically correct. After getting settled in, the guys waste no time to get into the hills. On the way to the shooting range, they spot an antelope grazing on the hillside and stop to take a look. Then continued onto the range to do some target practice to make sure the flight didn't compromise the accuracy of the rifles. After looking at the target, they were now confident with the rifle's accuracy and headed down the road. It wasn't long until they spotted their first group of whitetail. What do you think? Um, if you want to try that one, you're welcome to it. Can we get around them before we get to them? Well, I'll see, I'll see if I can hit them off. Could you hit him and knock him down a little? I mean, <laughs> down a little bit. How far is it? How is there? How far is the range? Four hundred. Fifty or so. Pretty good. 
ready, get ready to shoot. I'll tell you, get ready. Let me see how it looks in the crosshairs. I think they're a little far to crack out. Yeah. It's not measuring, so it's over 500. It's out there. Over 600, actually. Yeah. yeah, where we first saw him was 270. He's too far for me. Yeah. These bucks were on the move, so the guys quickly geared up and started the stalk to try to cut these deer off. It wasn't long till they got into a good position for a shot. Right when you think everything is going as planned, the animals usually have a different plan. And that's usually the case while hunting. The guys make a dash to the next bridge to try again. Unfortunately, they came up short. The bucks were nowhere to be found. We're covering ground, huh? Seems like they're a lot easier to hit when they're sitting still. <laughs> Guide Phil decided to take John and Curtis to a spot where Phil had been seeing some elk moving through the Quakies in the evenings. The guys settled in for an evening sit. Soon after, a grouse hung around giving John something to help pass the time. Unfortunately, this was the only critter to be seen on this sit. And so, it was back to camp. Here's a toast to uh, killing elk, killing deer, getting it done, getting it done right, and uh, to more starts. And to and our host, cheers. Jim Shell, and to safety. Host. And to safety. Oh, welcome to the party. Smooth. You think Curtis is ready for day two? To me, this is day one. Yeah. This is just a warm up. Yeah. Last night was just a, uh, just a, just a little bit of a, a scouting, if you will, and and a few warning shots for the deer to let them know that we're here. So, today's going to be a day of getting the elk for sure. This is my, my pre-kill face. <laughs> or maybe I just woke up face. The next morning on the drive, there were elk moving. Though the difficult thing was, the elk were on land. They didn't have permission to hunt. John and Curtis covered a lot of ground and glassed as much as they could before their morning hunt was forced to an end by a thick wall of fog. After lunch, the weather made a turn in the hunters' favor. They hit the hills once again. With the exception of a few mealy does, there was little excitement. About the time when the air changes and the light fades, giving you the feeling of anticipation. When your senses kick into overdrive, Every sound makes your heart flutter. The sun dropped behind the ridge, and the second day came to a close. It's day three. We've had two complete non-shooting days. We're stocking up with chocolate, Red Bull, lots of bullets, with intentions of killing a lot of shit today. How cold is it, John? It's 4,000 degrees below zero. Perfect. Honest to God, I'm not exaggerating. We got 5.30 in the morning. 5.30. We're going to go have about 92 coffees and uh, take care of a little uh, killing business before we head out. Oh, yeah. A little toiletsky business. Then after that, we're going to get our hunt on. On the third morning, elk were spotted, but there was only one thing between the hunters and the herd of elk, a fence dividing their hunting land. So John and Curtis were once again forced to move on. As morning became afternoon, the game changed from elk to whitetail, 
after driving around, glassing, and sighting a couple of shooter bucks. Curtis decided to sit on the edge of a hillside, hoping for a lucky break before heading in for the night. Day three's done. Haven't had anything in the crosshairs. Really getting antsy. <laughs> Just gotta kill something tomorrow. That's all I can say. Yeah, tomorrow things gotta die. We gotta get out some milk. We just need an opportunity. Just give me the opportunity. Once we get the opportunity, that's what it takes. Start making it happen. As Curtis's and John's daily routine of hiking and glassing was continued on the fourth day, they came across a group of whitetails. With both John and Curtis in position for a shot, they waited to see how this attempt would unfold. The first group came within a hundred yards, but then as fast as they came, they were gone. Soon after, a nice buck was heading their way, fast. John had already made up his mind. If a shot presented itself, he was pulling the trigger. Well, let's just say the shot presented itself. On the other side of the rock made blind, Curtis took a shot at another buck in the group. Shooting from different elevations can play tricks on you, as it did with Curtis, as he shot over the buck's back. There was no better miss than a clean miss. Watching this buck run off, it's clear that it was unscathed. Although Curtis knows that it's his responsibility as an ethical hunter to go down to confirm the miss before going to John's buck. John was extremely pleased with his buck, not only because of the beauty of the animal and the overall experience of the hunt, but this was John's first buck. There we go. Oh, beauty. Nice Mama, Daddy's bringing home the beef. White tail. Nice. With my best bud Kurt here. Yeah, she's a beauty. Shortly after John got to recap the hunt with all of his buddies. Later that day, the guys went back out in search of elk. Along the way, they came across this bear den and John just couldn't resist himself and had to take a look inside. Once to the spot where the guys would spend their evening, they found a small mealy buck. Then, a shooter came from nowhere, giving Curtis an opportunity. Curtis capitalized on this opportunity.
On the final day of the hunt, John and Curtis have yet to find any elk. Considering their hunt was still a success in many ways, they decided to pack it up and head for home. Well, we just had our last morning. Went up there and just froze and uh, didn't see a thing. So we could either stay all day and maybe freeze tonight, or we're gonna pack it up and book it home to Mama's. So I think we're gonna book it. We got the deer, we're gonna throw them in the truck, drop them off at the butcher, cut, wrap, and head to the airport for a quick shower. Break. Well, as much as uh, it's been fun, I probably wanna go home and be with Mama more than I wanted to be here. And I wanted to be here real bad, so baby, I'm coming home. This trip consisted of five guys heading from California to Edmonton, Canada for a bison hunt. Curtis's father, Alan, and friend Nick got into Edmonton early on Thursday evening. Curtis, John, and Scott were delayed due to inclement weather. They didn't arrive until 2 a.m. Friday morning. After a short nap, the guys had no idea what the day had in store for them. Yeah, I got my 30, 40 seconds of sleep in. Yeah, I'm all ready to kill a buffalo. Perfect. You go outside this morning? Yeah, it's freezing. I mean, it's beyond words. You can't even breathe out there. You walk outside, you go. Huh. We had the window open all night. Once up and around, the fellas met up with the rest of the crew before heading down for breakfast. The bags were loaded into the trucks, and the guys couldn't get into the warm trucks quick enough. As Curtis's dad would say, this morning, was a nipper. At a chilly 21 degrees below, these California boys were a little out of their element. As the sun climbed behind the trees, the guys scraped a porthole through the frozen windows to see this beautiful country. The two hour drive to camp was enough to make all trigger fingers a bit itchy and ready to go. They wasted no time unloading their frozen gear from the trucks and stacked it in front of the blazing fire. While waiting for their gear to thaw, the guys told stories and went over some of the details of the hunt before heading out later that day. After 20 minutes of walking, they spotted a bison through the trees. As they stalked closer to the animal, the bison stood, shaking the snow from their backs before heading for cover. It was an amazing sight to see these 2,000 pound animals. One can't help but think that they experienced what hunters must have experienced hundreds of years ago. The guys waited for the bison to get a safe distance away before starting their stop along a fresh track in the snow. It turns out these beasts didn't travel far. A quick game plan was made and executed. John knew what his objective was, and without hesitation, dropped the mammoth animal with one shot, finishing him with a second. The rest of the herd didn't stick around, and neither did Curtis or Scott. 
Off in a sprint, they chased after the herd. By this time, cameraman Zach caught up, and they had already had a second and third bison on the ground. It's my first buffalo. Very first buffalo for all three of us within two minutes of each other. Two to three minutes. Yes. <laughs> this is one of the pair that Curtis and I shot. We still yeah. got to go find John's. John's is still waiting. John's is still waiting for us. Actually, I thought I got a buffalo, and I realized I shot a hamster. <laughs> so we, we don't have to go back and look at mine. He's about 42 pounds. He's just a big Canadian hamster. <laughs> down. There we are. We were sneaking up on this whole herd of buffalo. John snuck out, shot his buffalo about 50 yards, and it dropped. <laughs> Curtis and I took off running after the rest of Flat the herd. Sprint. Flat sprint. We're huffing and puffing. It's 22 below. I can feel my toes and my hands since because uh, we're in the uh, Cabela's uh, poster boys. And we, we end up seeing all the buffalo run down the line about 150 yards away, maybe 100 yards away, Kurt. Yeah. And uh, Curtis and I unload. Uh, and this, this is the result of one of them. And the other one uh, you just saw with Curtis's. We're happy as hell to be here. Fantastic hunt. And uh, we're kind of sorry it's over, huh? No, no, we're I'm not. not. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to hear. You know, we got two more to kill. The guide says to us. The guide says to us. He goes, "Oh, that'd be too easy." We look at each other without we even like, We're all about easy. We say we're all about <laughs> easy. <laughs> Let's go look at John's. Let's go find my Let's hamster. Find John's hamster. <laughs> <laughs> my lovely, lovely, lovely love of my life to go hunting with uh, my best amigos on the planet. And our first buffalo hunt together, and uh, not even an hour into it, we've got three, 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 maybe 60 freezers full of meat coming. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what a great day. Beautiful Canada. It's a lovely, what is it, 21 below? 20, 25 below. 20, 25 below. I'm not cold at all, are you? I'm not cold no. at all. In fact, I'm sweaty, I'm happy, and uh, thanks for the birthday present, baby. Everyone headed back to the warmth of the lodge. Meanwhile, Alan and Nick still needed to claim one of these monsters for themselves. Curtis and John went along with Alan, because Curtis was excited to see his dad take one of these giant animals. They spotted a small group about 300 yards away, and determined there were two good bulls in the group, and started to close in. It wasn't long after re-entering the woods that Alan found himself eye to eye with a couple of bison. Trying to set emotion aside so he could take aim with his 30 out 6, he released the safety and squeezed the trigger. Click. Not what you want to hear in any hunting situation. While Alan was trying to contend with a frozen action, Nick seized the moment by putting the hammer down. Alan's rifle was still stuck. Nick racked another shell and handed his rifle over to Alan. With two shots from a borrowed rifle, Alan quickly made this trip a hundred percent by putting the fifth bison down. Curtis and uh, Scott and John had the morning hunt. Nick and I had the afternoon hunt. And Nick and I came out just as successful as they did, a buffalo each. A wonderful trip. We have to uh, really appreciate Manfred for helping us out on this, taking us through his property and uh, finding these wonderful buffalo. Good job. I guess this looks like the character of a wood buffalo oh, yeah. with a big brown mane on his shoulder. Sure are a huge animal. Oof. I'm just totally impressed with this hunt. Can't believe the size of the buffalo. We've got the answers probably spreading at That's least 24 inches apart. Each antler is probably 16 inches plus on each side. Each horn. And, uh, <laughs> Just a huge buffalo. I mean, the body of them are just huge. So, 18, probably 16 to 1800 pounds is what they're probably gonna weigh in on. And we got one here, 
and 20 feet away one's still steaming and that's Nick Buffalo. We're gonna go talk about his in just a couple minutes. Part of the same size as dad's. A beautiful woodland bull. Great coat on him. Nice and thick. A wide spread. Probably as far as in between, probably a 22 inch spread, 24 inch spread. Thick horns, beautiful face. A yeah. big, big Edmonton Buffalo. Good job. Good job on Tatonka Flats. Tatonka Flats. Getting her done. <laughs> beautiful. Five wolfhounds a day. Five oh. bison in one hunt. <laughs> beautiful that Not is. bad. Anyway, that. you draw it up. It's like that grizzly. Some say that there is a certain amount of luck when it comes to the sport of hunting. Nobody knows this more than Curtis Martin himself. In the state of Nevada, there is a special draw elk hunt that the odds of drawing a tag are, well let's just say they're not in your favor. Curtis, knowing that this is a hunt of a lifetime, invited his mom and dad along with him to share the experience. After a beautiful drive from California to Tonopah, Nevada, they arrive at the hotel where they would overnight before heading to camp the next morning. End of August. End of August well, before sunrise the next morning, they headed down to meet their guides and fellow hunter Terry for breakfast. Terry and Curtis compared stories about the process in which they were awarded this coveted tag. How many years you've been turning in? <laughs> you got your gun? Don't do it. He's one of those guys. I don't want to tell you. Because I want you to still like me after I tell you. <laughs> Can't be any worse than last year. Yeah. One time. That guy. Oh, last year. Right. Well, first timer. First timer. But he has put in for other elk tags in other places, but that's the first mm -hmm. time there. 27. You, uh, from the battery. California. California. Yeah. yeah. How many years you got, Terry? 30? 28. 28, I had 27. And that's his, it was all the way back. <laughs> <laughs> that's your 28th year. I had a great meeting with Nick. I gave us some exciting news that we got a nice uh, couple bulls running around camp. It's about 200 animals, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty pumped about that. Uh, lots of ones that are bugling. So we just got to load up the truck, load up the mom and dad, and then uh, head down there and load up the horses and head in so we'll probably be in about two o'clock but we had about a 45 minute drive to get to where we need to marshal up so load up the truck and uh, let's get ready so towards uh, getting up there and seeing what's uh, see how these elk are running around so hopefully I don't shoot the first uh, little bull I see <laughs> after breakfast they loaded up the rigs and headed off to camp Once at camp, they took a quick tour before loading up the pack train and heading to Spike Camp. Got, uh, <clears throat> just got here from Ramada Inn. Last night we got in kind of late, uh, kind of a straight shot, but nevertheless a little exhausted when we woke up this morning. But the good news is that we're uh, ready to mount up. Got a little horses saddled, got all our gear on here. Had breakfast with Nick this morning and met the crew and met another hunter, Terry. He's got one more tag, so he's the, the non-resident guy. And he's pretty uh, excited to be here. Just about jumping for joy when he found out he got the tag, so it's exciting to have him along on the trip. And we just got uh, our last bags put on the horses, and we're just ready to 
mount up and go up this mountain. So I'll get up on this, I think it's called Table Mountain, and get in there to camp and get set up and get ready for opening day tomorrow. So we will be mounting up here in a couple minutes. I think I got my head at the right end, but I guess I'll wake up tomorrow. Maybe I'll have a face full of blood and a headache. I'm just getting settled into home. Yeah, this is home for a couple days. Hopefully just a couple days. Hopefully not a week. But the camp cook had a good idea. <laughs> he says he came out of the tent and uh, there was a couple cow elk that were in the little wallow. And uh, then he noticed off to the left there was a nice six-point bull. So... Maybe we don't have to go very far, but they uh, outside of the tent, so I'll make sure I'm loaded up just in case. <laughs> Once settled in, the crew headed out to do a little glassing to see just what was cruising the hillsides. There definitely is not a shortage of animals. The special regulations of this area have made an obvious impact on the quality of elk. Finding one without spooking all of the other elk around will be the true task. On the walk back, they spotted a bull working the hillsides off in the distance. The guides believe it's the huge 400 inch bull they saw several days before. No, I think it's that bull we seen last week. That's him. That's him. Big five. That's, that's him. Big, big fish. See him fish. That's Stick over his fourth. Same oh, that's him. He's got a. He's got 16 inch. That's on the left side. That's him right there. 
That evening, they enjoyed the warmth of the campfire before retiring for the night. There's some broken ice in that one. Hey, do you remember to throw the beers and cokes in the truck? Fargoni? We forgot. The next morning, the skies are clear and the air is very brisk. It doesn't take long before Curtis and his guide start to see game. The first bull is a great six point. Curtis looks him over before making his decision. We've been chasing bulls up and down this little valley that goes up here. We had a really nice six point that uh, we thought there was another bull in here. We we're pretty sure there was one more. This is the same hill last night where we saw a huge 400 inch bull. So we came up here, we were just down those trees down there and decided to uh, come a little closer to these ones. We pushed them out the backside, but at least we saw what was here. So anyway, we're having a good morning. See lots of lots of animals. So hopefully we find a big one. That was a good bull. It was an awesome bull. Nice six point. Nice long tines, just a little bit skinny for what caliber we're up here for. So just keep our nose down, keep keep hunting. Because they saw so many bulls the previous day, and this being the first morning, Curtis decided to move on. As they move across the countryside, they come to a group of guys standing around a monster elk. It was Terry and the bull he had just harvested. What do you think, buddy? What do you think it is? Oh, he's at least 385, at least. Look at the mass. Yeah. Kill him, why don't you kill a big one? Congratulations, oh, that's, that's awesome. Hey. Good job. Man, oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's it, boy. You think this bullet will oh. As the morning became afternoon, the guy stopped for a quick lunch before getting back after it. A short distance down the ridge, they find some cows in the timber and stop to glass for a bull. This bull is definitely a trophy. However, although extremely wide, he's lacking in some other areas. It takes a certain kind of hunter to pass on these kind of bulls. But Curtis is confident that around any bend, there could be the one. the right move to let that one go. We'll see. I was hoping for a six point at least. We'll keep on going to see what we get. <laughs> Moving along they see elk everywhere stopping to glass each herd. Working their way down the ridge Curtis spotted some elk at the bottom of the hill. He bailed off his horse to try and get a better look. Once Curtis got a good look at this bull, it was quite obvious this was the elk Curtis came to Nevada for.
Get that. That's all right. He's a nice bull. When he turns sideways, he's got a lot of antler. Right. It's an awesome bull. <laughs> Sometimes passing animals is difficult because of the risk involved. Anything can happen. For Curtis, the weight paid off. This bull is perfect, and Curtis couldn't be happier. Woohoo! Look at that rock. Oh my dear lord. Oh. What a behemoth! Boy. Beautiful boy. Hell, he's great. Thank you. Oh, yes. Look at this, huh? Yeah, he's thick all the way through, all the way to the tips. Each horn is... Uh... Oh, man. It's perfect. It's perfect. It is? Yeah, perfect bull for the, uh, oh. for the wall. Beautiful bull. Happy with him? I'm really happy. Oh boy. Nice long beams too, huh? Yeah. Man. <laughs> Congratulations, you bet. Holy cow. That's what we're after right there. Yep. They got the bull taken care of and headed back off to camp to show everyone their trophy. Does that help? One shot. That was it, it was all done. The pack back to the main camp seemed short and relaxed. The time was spent taking in what had just happened. The emotion following a successful hunt is one of a kind. Being successful in a once in a lifetime hunt is indescribable. With the truck loaded down, the Martins began the journey home with much more than a huge elk displayed proudly, but an experience like none other shared with family. but it was just fantastic and so we all piled in the in the rigs and, and uh, went out searching for the uh, the perfect bull and uh, it's fantastic because we, we got to our house.